This is the Focus 3 podcast with Tim and Brian Kite, number 22. And tonight, you've got Tim Kite going solo. Our topic in this episode is momentum. We're going to talk primarily to athletic coaches. If you're a, a, a business leader or an educator, there's good stuff in here for you also. But the primary audience that I'm talking to are athletic coaches. Now, this topic of momentum is enormously important. And it's not even primarily momentum during a game or during competition. This is about momentum of your team, period. Now, if you're listening and you're starting your season, you're starting your off-season training, or you're mid-season, or you're wrapping up a season, the things we're going to talk about, they apply to all of those various periods in the life cycle of a season, the life cycle of a team. And what I want to emphasize tonight is how important the coaching and leadership side of momentum is. What do you need to do as a coach, as a coaching staff, to initiate and ignite momentum? And what do you need to do to, as a coach, as a coaching staff, to sustain and protect momentum? It's physics, folks. We're going to talk about the physics of momentum. Let's get to work. All right, coaches, this episode is for you. If you coach an athletic team, you're going to want to pay attention to what I have to say today. Now, if you're a, a business leader or an educator, I'm sure there's lots of great stuff in here, but I'm going to address those who are coaching athletic teams. The, the, the topic today is momentum. If you coach a team, you want maximum momentum in your team. Let's talk about initiating and igniting momentum, and then let's talk about sustaining and protecting it. So first, how do you get it? How do you get it started? How do you initiate and, and ignite momentum in your team? Well, that's about focus and energy. Coaches, your athletes will pay attention to what you pay attention to. They will focus on what you focus on. So in order to initiate and to ignite momentum on your team, be exceptionally clear about what you want in three areas. One, effort. Two, execution. And three, teamwork. Every team needs those three, those three things to succeed. Effort, execution, and teamwork. And it's the job of the coach to make those things exceptionally clear. Let me say it this way. Make the standards that you want exceptionally clear, and then equip and inspire your athletes to meet those standards. So be exceptionally clear about the level of effort you want, be exceptionally clear about the level of execution that you want, and then be exceptionally clear about what teamwork, about what trust, about how you want your athletes to interact with each other. Execution, effort, and teamwork are critical to igniting and initiating momentum on your team. Now, I had the privilege back in the 70s when I was a student athlete at UCLA. I ran track, and our locker room was in Poly Pavilion, which is where the basketball team had their locker room, and the coach at the time was John Wooden. Coach Wooden was a master of exactly what it is that we're talking about. Coach Wooden, I, I watched him do this over and over and over again. Coach Wooden would say this, Coaching is about communication, education, and motivation, not about intimidation. And when, when Coach Wooden would instruct us, I, I watched him do this. He would tell, he'd stop a drill, he'd stop a play in practice and say, guys, I want this. He told him what he wanted. Not that. He'd tell him what they did. Wrong. I want this, what he wanted. Go again. And then they'd run the play, they'd, they'd run the drill, and he would observe them. And they'd stop him again. Guys, I want this crystal clear the standard of execution or the standard of effort, the standard of interaction that he wanted, not that. He saw some flaw or some area where they had a gap. I want this. And he'd tell them what he wanted again. So Coach Wooden was just incredible in his, in his communication to his athletes, in his instruction, education to his athletes, and the way he motivated his athletes. And then that brings us to the energy piece. So focus is the first thing you need to do to initiate and to ignite momentum. And the second thing is you have to bring energy as a coach. Let me use John Wooden again as an example. Coach Wooden had this incredible ability 
to have intensity without anger. I mean, he, honestly, he was one of the most intense coaches I have ever seen in my life, and he just didn't get angry. Again, he would communicate and he would teach with passion, with energy, and, and, but not with anger. And it's interesting, too, that, that the intensity that a coach brings must be positive and it must be productive. Here's what this means. Your athletes must feel your desire for them to achieve and succeed. And I've seen this over and over again in these 35 years that I have coached coaches and I've watched uh, coaches in athletics as well as, as educators and people in business. And it's this, uh, an athlete motivated to achieve will almost always outperform an, ad, an, an athlete who's motivated to avoid punishment. And when, when a coach is unnecessarily and frequently angry, you'll find an athlete's going to be motivated to avoid that coach's anger and displeasure. So coaches, listen carefully to what I'm saying to you. Focus on the standards that you want for effort, for execution, and for teamwork, and bring the energy. And that your athletes must feel your desire for them to achieve and succeed. Now, you're not lowering your standards at all. Obviously, that's the whole point about focus, high standards. But then bring your energy. Build a culture of achievement, not a culture of punishment. You want your athletes motivated to pursue achieving, you do not want your athletes motivated to avoid punishment. Intensity is like fire. It can cook your food or it can burn your house down. And I think one of the rarest and most powerful skills in, in, in coaching and certainly in leadership is this thing of intensity without anger. So set your standards, make them crystal clear, and then equip and inspire your athletes to meet those standards in three areas. Effort, execution, and teamwork. That's how you initiate and ignite momentum. That's how you get it started. It comes from you first, coaches, and you have to be relentless yourself. Relentless yourself. You never stop. Focus energy. Focus energy from you as a coach. And when your athletes see it from you, hear it from you, feel it in you, that's where you're going to get that momentum started. Now, as the momentum builds, you've got to sustain and protect it. You must sustain and protect that momentum. Now let's go to physics to get an understanding of what that means. Well, there are four things that are the enemies of momentum. Four things, the big enemies that get in the way of momentum. One is friction. Two is insufficient energy and effort. Three is drifting off trajectory, you know, losing your way. And then number four would be speed bumps. So once you've initiated and sustained or initiated and ignited the momentum, now you've got to sustain it and you got to protect it. So friction, which is the first enemy of momentum, friction is that negative force that holds back the movement of any kind of an object. It creates resistance, and then it reduces, obviously, the momentum of the object or the thing or the people who are moving. So on a team, the primary sources of friction are selfishness and low trust. That's, a, that's true in any kind of a team. The primary sources of friction on a team are self-centeredness and low trust. That means this, commitment to teammates, that's the, the love, the, 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 the care, the, the commitment that athletes, that players, that teammates have for each other, that's a we, not me attitude, is essential to momentum. Let me put it this way, deep trust eliminates friction and accelerates momentum on a team. Let me say it again, deep trust Deep commitment to each other, where trust is earned, that eliminates friction and it accelerates momentum. Second enemy of momentum on a team is insufficient energy and effort, either from the coach or from the players or from the athletes. Momentum, obviously, to, to, for any kind of an object to continue to move forward at the speed and on the tra trajectory you want, it requires sustained energy. When energy goes down, Momentum goes down. When energy goes up, momentum goes up. So commitment to relentless effort is the fuel for momentum. It's that fuel for that forward movement. It's that fuel that pushes the team through barriers and through difficulties and through challenges. So it's all about that relentless effort. And again, let me go back for a second. The first place where that energy comes from is from you. So if your energy wanes or if your energy is too negative... 
then that is a, a, a source of negative momentum. That gets in the way. That's an obstacle to how you want that team, how you want your team to perform. Relentless effort means exactly what it sounds like. Tenacious, persistent, never-ending effort every day, every drill, every rep. On a team, when you elevate effort, you accelerate momentum. Again, on a team, when you elevate effort, you accelerate momentum. Third enemy, the third obstacle of momentum on a team is drifting off of trajectory. Because that's a loss of focus. That's what that is. An object that is off trajectory starts to lose momentum. Same thing on a team. You drift off trajectory when you give your attention to things that don't deserve your attention. You give things that don't matter, uh, things distract you. And, and it's, it's obviously a, a challenge for all of us, whether it's a, t- a, a coach or it's a teammate. But there are, teammate, there are a lot of things in our world today that try to get our attention off of the drill that we're doing, off of the discipline process we're committed to. So it's very important that you pay attention to where the attention of your players are going. Never let up. Make sure that you are constantly paying attention to where the team is focusing. And that means a laser focus on the purpose of what you do in practice, a laser focus on the purpose of what you do in strength and conditioning. And it's your job, again, as a coach, to make sure your players are paying attention. Now, now coaches, real quick, here's a phrase you hear all the time in coaching is that we, we tell athletes to maintain their focus. But I want you to think about this for a second. It's really not possible to maintain 100% focus 100% of the time. So here's the key. Teach your athletes how to quickly recognize when they lose focus and to quickly refocus. I think this is a breakthrough that, that a lot of coaches need to understand and be much better at this skill. It is not possible for the human brain to constantly stay focused all the time. Therefore, the great skill I'm seeing in elite teams and elite coaches and elite competitors is the ability to quickly recognize when you've lost focus and to quickly get it back again. So refocus is a critical skill here. If, and when you drift off trajectory, you're obviously going to lose momentum. So teach your athletes how to recognize when their focus drifts and get it back fast. Focus eliminates distractions and accelerates momentum. And it's the job of the coach, number one, to maintain his or her focus and help the players, the athletes, the team to do the same thing. Now, number four is speed bumps. That's the fourth enemy, the fourth obstacle of momentum. That, obviously, when a car hits a bump in the road, its momentum is, dir- is disrupted and that car slows down. And in fact, if the speed bump's big enough, it can also get the thing off trajectory. Now, speed bumps would be any default impulsive behavior that anyone on the team engages in. And the, 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 the intervention here, the coaching activity is teach your players E plus R equals O and teach them what discipline-driven intentional behavior looks like. And in particular, work with the athletes to recognize those events, those situations come, that come up when they are tempted to go default in their behavior. Teach them the skills that they need to respond with purpose and intentionality to situations they face, whether it's a social situation or an academic situation, and certainly in athletics. Teach your players how to make discipline-driven decisions. Remember, again, as a coach, set your standards, make those standards exceptionally clear, and then equip and inspire your athletes to meet those standards. And when they fall below those standards, again, it's your job to communicate, educate, and motivate that that athlete, to respond more effectively to those kind of situations. Discipline-driven behavior avoids speed bumps, and it, and it sustains and accelerates momentum. So let me close by, again, saying this. Be exceptionally clear about what you want in three areas. The level of effort you want, the level of execution that you want, and the level of trust and teamwork that you want. Your athletes will pay attention to what you pay attention to. Make the standard exceptionally clear, then equip and inspire your athletes to meet those standards. Give your athletes feedback. When they do what you want, praise them. When they don't do what you want them to do, challenge them. But don't 
get angry all the time. Be clear. And yourself, you have to practice this first. They have to feel it in you. They have to see it in you. They have to hear it from you. Set the standard yourself. Be clear about your standards and then equip and inspire your athletes. That's how you initiate, ignite, sustain, and protect momentum. It can be your competitive advantage. Now go do the work. <laughs>